Posting pictures on the gram so other people know that we're more than friends. Ever since you came around, I've never been sober. Always in my head. Met you at a time when I was so low. Went from just talking to taking you. great might presents to us a wondrous sight of engines now resplendent made from years of harbouring in the shade. They came from yard and field or wood, and in their twilight silent stood. With rusting motion and boiler coal, it was for scrap that they were sold. Then in the summer's sweltering scorch, their end it was, the burner's torch. But some from this grim fate were taken, the slumbering giants gently awaken. With lavish care from owners new, they are but now the chosen few that represent a lost great power, which we represent to you this hour. But these are the engines of an era long past, built by the men whose skills were last. They made them strong to give of their best. In aging years, they do not rest. They still drive on with fiery soul and beating heart that scorns control with burnished limbs of shimmering steel, and throb and pulse of circling wheel, with shining paint and polished brass, all other machines they did surpass. But for all this grace and beauty, they were made for man's duty, hauling with ease the team's former loads up and down the country's roads. Others were the sons of soil, from ploughing to thrashing they eased the toil. 
Then came the showman with engines so grand. Each thought his the best in the land. Yet with brass and electric light, there came the strength to move the site. This was part of their calling to man. But what of the homes where they began? Charles Borrell affected the true Norfolk breed, while Ransoms and Garrett's were Suffolk seed. Next came Lincoln, its four famous sons of Roby, Clayton, Foster and Rustons. Marshals of Gainsborough, in that same shire, they made engines for all to admire. Then in Cheshire, the land of salt, Fogans were built with never a halt. But with pride, the county of Salop made their sentinels go with a gallop. Further north, in the city of Leeds, fowls and the clarence sufficed the needs. From the Garden of England, the prancing horse, Avon and Porter ran the course. And Wallace and Stevens, with sprightly five ton, Taskers nearby would give it a run. These are a few of the famous breeds, all working the purpose of man's needs. And now to you, this hour we bring these engines for their praise to sing. With shrieking whistle and vapour cloud, their aim is now to please the fowl, please the fowl. So let us salute these machines from the past, but by the men who steal this collect. They made them strong to give of their best in aging years and do not rest.
And there you are, everyone. For the first time since 2019, the engines are entering the arena. And it's very hard not to get emotional, isn't it? We're back here once again with perhaps one of the finest pageants of steam power anywhere in the country, whether it's road or rail or whatever. These engines on the movement in front of us, you're lying in the arena several dozens deep almost in places, and there is nothing fine to see. I think we have the best seat here in the house in the commentary box, but what a wonderful thing. So many glorious engines, so many friends as the crews and owners from all over the UK that come to join us. There's so many different varieties of steam engine that we have here. The quality of the display here is second to none. And the real credit to not just the owners, but the team who put the show on for us year after year for the engines for us to see. Led in two by two, as always. I uh, wonder if there's something to do with an arc in there. Perhaps uh, if there's ever been another flood, the engines will go in two by two first. But uh, led in always by the magnificent Showman's Road locomotives, of which we have a selection here this afternoon. Some from the well known manufacturers of coils of Thetford, and uh, including Dreadnought from Frank Lithgow. Frank Lithgow, a stalwart supporter of the County of Salop Valley through the decades, and uh, great to see Dreadnought with us here this afternoon. But other engines also, Alistair Evans, having just passed the commentary point with uh, Philadelphia. Also, superb engine there, and it's working life down in Hampshire, a requisition for war work. So these engines already had a second generation of work after they finished some of them with the uh, with the fairgrounds and they were put onto haulage. Some of these engines were used on demolition uh, in, the, in the London and Bristol and other big cities, pulling down blitz buildings. And uh, once again returned to Showman State and uh, Philadelphia particularly, it parked up on a farm where it lay hidden for 48 years. People knew it was there, but it didn't see the light of day. So it's fabulous to see it here with us today. Likewise, the final showman Starlight, which is new to uh, Judds of Chuck Morbid, extensively known by the Edwards family, who uh, ran it, Edwards of Swindon, which were a very well-known fairground family, and uh, brought to us by um, Alan Lloyd this afternoon, who's been a mask crew for him. And that engine, when it hasn't been in the arena, has been pumping out the amps into uh, Dorman's vault, so doing the job that it was made to do. Wonderful, wonderful thing to see. And uh, you know, Foster the leader, not far away on the other side, also worked very hard engine, worked for Pat Collins uh, from the West Midlands, very well known amusement caterer, and uh, a very, very famous engine, very well known for uh, Midlands rallies over the last 60 years. Um, also, very different colour of Repulse, the Fowler, the Blue Fowler, also. Uh, on the far side of the arena at the present time, on the right hand side of the commentary box, very different uh, in that blue paint scheme, very little showman brass on it, very little lighting, 